Howdy, kids. How's everyone doing today? Good to see everybody. Glad you could make it. We'll give everybody a minute or two to get here. We're going to have a little uh, fun today, the usual Q&A. Uh, we're going to have a special guest here momentarily for a brief period. Uh, hi, Remy. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Dame Overlord. Good to see everybody. Trigger Finger Studios. Good to see you. Hi, Scott. Uh, the cats are fine. They're sleeping quietly right now. The dog, not so much. Dog is not sure where the cats are. It makes dog very anxious. I don't know why. It's a dog cat thing. I'm more of cat people. The dog is on his own or her own. I should even like be polite to her and use her chosen pronoun. Uh, hello, Corey Bishop. Good morning, everybody. It is week two. Uh, we're ready to uh, roll out another game and uh, another week of games and uh, had a nice game on Thursday night. Uh, unless you're Justin Herbert or an, uh, Justin Herbert investor. And that's the big news, you know, going to be the big news heading into week three is uh, the condition of one Justin Herbert and his fractured rib cartilage. This is kind of good, right? The, that it's cartilage, right? He looked horrible. You, I mean, you could see he was in a lot of pain. Uh, very encouraging that frozen rope he tossed, though, uh, you know, down to the one-yard line. So right one play after he could hardly make a throw. So clearly in a lot of pain there. Uh, but that it's not a fractured bone. It's not the bone. It's kind of encouraging, right? Because, I mean, I think they would be more worried about possible displacement and puncturing things. Uh, and so if it's just cartilage, he will get a pain-killing injection and block the pain. Terod Taylor would like him to know he needs to be careful with that. He, <laughs> we all know how Justin Herbert got his starting job was Tyrod, now Tyrod again. Uh, Taylor uh, took a pain-killing injection from the Chargers. Uh, doctor and it didn't go well so hopefully we don't have any hopefully they've learned from their past experience also in the news today uh just to you know get some things on your radar in case you're just tuning in look it's been a long week everyone has things to do deandre swift listed as questionable seems likely to play alvin Kamara questionable along with uh Jameis winston winston seems likely to play alvin Kamara very uncertain we'll be watching later today to see if they elevate latavius murray from the practice squad after adding him to the roster of the practice squad this week. J.K. Dobbins practiced all week. Will he play? We don't know. The Buccaneers, every damn player is hurt. Chris Godwin will not play. Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, uh, among others. Uh, Russell Gage, Rashad Perriman. I should do the whole list, right? Uh, all listed as questionable. My guess is most of those guys are going to play. Except Chris Godwin. Godwin he's ruled out. Mike uh, Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, has a quad issue. Uh, seems like he's going to play. Weird thing for the Colts, they didn't actually have a practice yesterday because the previous two days were very physical. And so uh, so they called off practice. Uh, Frank Reich said uh, that he, he was optimistic about Pittman, so we'll take him at his word. T. Higgins also seems likely to play uh, coming off a concussion. George Kittle improving, got on the practice field yesterday. That's great news. Uh, we'll see. He should be ready to go. Najee Harris off the injury report. I don't have a good feeling about Najee. We're going to talk about this a little bit. I'm sure I see your questions rolling in. I want to, and, and I'll get to all of them, of course, and uh, and I'll get to some of them with uh, with my special guest uh, here. We're going to have jump on for a brief period. Uh, Mr. Eric Romoff is with us. You know him from Twitter as uh, at Fantasy Nav. Uh, Pros with Joe's a great. A great charitable endeavor that I've been part of the last two years. It's been a joy uh, working with my Joe Rocco. This year is great. Uh, we're having a great time because we won our first game. You can find him again on Twitter at Fantasy Nav, at Pros with Joe's, at Get Green Screens, and he's a contributor to Doctor Roto. And of course, right here at Football Diehards, Eric, how you doing today? Bob, I'm doing well. It's it's Saturday, so we're within about 24 hours from the the official kickoff of the full slate for for Week Two. So, what's not to love? Well, that's what I want to talk about. Everyone here, you know, who's been coming to this chat knows I will be answering questions and I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to make Eric answer a couple too. Um, but I wanted to let everyone who comes to this uh, live stream know that we have another live stream every Saturday night at 9 p.m. with Eric and Jamie Calandro talking DFS lineups. What do you guys, uh, what do you guys got on tap for us? Yeah, so we kick off at 9 o'clock Eastern every Saturday night and we are going game by game through the entire slate. So, Typically, the way that we format it, we spend a little bit more time, a little bit more time proportionally on uh, the big ticket games, the games that uh, we're going to have a lot of exposure to, the games that carry your high totals. And then we, we continue to work down the line and identify some areas where we can try to pivot, maybe a couple of games that are going overlooked where we can try to get a little bit of differentiation in our lineup. But ultimately, it's about an hour long show. It's every Saturday night at 9 p.m. right here on the Football Diehards YouTube channel. And we are going game by game to make sure that you have what you need 
to, to, to be successful in DFS week over week in the NFL. So hit the subscribe button down below, right? right down there somewhere uh and uh hit the notification bell if you'd like and uh and watch your emails if you're a subscriber to the site and if you're not you should be use promo code diehards uh to get in on that at the at, at footballdiehards.com uh flash update premium contents rolling along lots of good things also right after that show tonight Eric, uh jamie jumps on the football diehards on sirius xm nfl and fantasy sports radio. We're simulcasting people every Saturday night, three hours. Mike Dempsey and myself. Uh, tonight we'll have another football diehard. Stafford Tara Roberts will be joining us along with Jamie. We'll have our game of the week, I believe, is Miami Baltimore. So lots of good stuff going on uh, throughout the evening. But definitely check into the YouTube channel uh, for Jamie and Eric. I, I watched last week after I finished my show. Great content. Lots of great information. Helped me set my lineups. Hope it helps you set yours. Uh, Eric's going to have to run soon. So I did want to get him in on a couple questions here, though, and tap into his expertise because we do have some good ones. I know Scott Kobe has been asking me about this one since yesterday. Uh, he's a little worried about David Montgomery. How worried are you about David Montgomery, and who are you playing, Montgomery or Sanders, in this one? Yeah, I'm I'm moderately concerned about David Montgomery, right? Um, you know, I'm more in the camp that just about everything we saw in that game at uh, at Chicago last week, playing in an absolute swamp, can kind of be taken with a grain of salt. So I think David Montgomery finished finished the week with like 1.5 or 1.6 yards per carry. Um, you know, absolutely disgraceful in terms of an efficiency stat. But if if we look at the the circumstance by which that this this occurred, I, I think there's at least ca cause for patience with David Montgomery. We also saw Khalil Herbert emerge a little bit. Another storyline to watch for week two specifically. If I have alternate options like Miles Sanders, I will start them over David Montgomery. But I don't think he's anywhere near drop territory yet. I do think that there are brighter days ahead, and that ultimately <laughs> this Eberflus system will find equilibrium between Montgomery, Fields, and Herbert as their primary rushers. This is stuff that I've been hearing since June that, uh, you know, from some of the beat writers we talked to at Football Diehards on Sirius XM Radio, uh, they are all trying to, you know, get ahead of the curve on this one and saying maybe Khalil Herbert's a little better fit. Uh, I think I told Scott yesterday in the chat that I'm about, you know, 40% concerned, right? I mean, we'll give it another week. I, I do think oh, you I need am. to throw out this week <laughs> one game and kind of figure it out and, and, and let things sort out. I still think David Montgomery's a pretty good player. And even if they, you know, even if he's not a great fit, He's still a good player, and, you know, they do have, you know, uh, he's got another year on his contract, so they don't have a lot of investment beyond that, but they're certainly going to use him. Uh, just, you know, and I know you've got to run, so I want before I get you off, I just to preview tonight's show, um, like, how, how much, how, how all-in is too all-in on the Cardinals-Raiders game? So it's, it's interesting, right? And a, a lot of what we did in the show – um, you know, Jamie speaks a lot to more of the cash and kind of single entry mindset. I'm kind of speaking to the GPP side. In in the case of the former for, for Jamie's area of expertise, this is a game that you're perfectly fine having a lot of exposure to, right? It carries one of the highest totals. There are several different ways to get into this game and to invest in different players. From my point of view, from more of the larger field GPP perspective, I do want exposure to this game, but specifically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a place to get different, right? So if, um, you know, if, if we're expecting Devontae Adams and uh, uh, Brown to be some of the more popular players uh, within this game, which our tools over at Football Diehards are indicating as such, I'm looking to probably fade my exposure to those players and try to get onto some of the tertiary peaches. Everyone's favorite player from last week, Greg Dortch, Probably a guy that I'll be a little bit overweight on relative to the field. I'm also willing to go back to Hunter Renfro for a bit of a bounce back coming out of the slot for the Raiders. So I want to be on this game, but I'm going to try to be underweight on the chalkier pieces and find different angles to get a little bit unique in my builds. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I, I got to say, though, Derek Carr, especially on FanDuel, criminally underpriced uh, in this one. Uh, so, He's going to be so, so chalky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to be so chalky. You got to have a little bit of chalk, though, in the tournaments as well uh, to yeah. get him. And, and I love, how, you know, but you're right. I mean, you do differentiation is the name of the game. It's those two or three outliers you have that are going to set you apart. So uh, looking forward tonight, once again, 9 p.m. Eastern time, everybody. Eric, 
Romoff, Jamie Calandro. They do great work. Follow uh, Eric on Twitter, at FantasyNav. I know you've got obligations today, so I'll be tuning in tonight. I'll watch the replay after I do the radio. Jamie will be jumping on the radio when he's done with you. It's a big synergistic mess here at Football Diehards, and I uh, appreciate you being part of it, Eric. We'll see you uh, later tonight. We are everywhere, Bob. Thanks for having me on. And for everyone watching on YouTube, we'll see you at 9 Eastern. All right, Eric Romoff, everybody. Uh, and again, the Die Hard, Football Diaries YouTube channel, we're trying to crank up the content. I'll be doing more stuff on Wednesdays. I know you keep hearing about this, but we do have the plans. We're just trying to put all the pieces in place. And the schedule is crazy around here, as you might be able to tell. Uh, every week, Football Diehards, we crank things up at two. Well, we crank things up Monday. We have Joe Kalana's injury overview and uh, free agent preview. Evan Tarciano's free agent waiver wire wizard uh, comes up on Tuesday. Then the regular content. And Eric mentioned some of the DFS tools and everything. We've got a ton of stuff there that you should get in on. Lineup optimizers. We have ownership percentages, which is very handy. Uh, in terms of columns, we got Justin. Uh, Lanero's digging in the crates looking for cheap bargains. John Lobs, the scholar's uh, sheet of DraftKings knowledge, like the piece I use every single week. My own DFS tournament three and out. Uh, Jamie does a DraftKings cash games and a GPP stacks piece every week. So, And Gary Davenport's the shadow knows. Great column. You'll find also other stuff. Brad Cruz's sit starts. Drew Phelps prop bets. And Casey Joyner this year is doing his blue rated wide outs. A great article. You can find some really great values there. So, uh, promotion, promotion, promotion. Now let's do questions. All right. So I know that's what you're here for. And by the way, you can also hear me on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio Monday nights, Thursday nights, Friday nights, 10 p.m. That's three hours of us on Monday and Thursday during the last half of the game. Then Saturday night, we're simulcast on uh, Sirius XM NFL Radio. So if you're calling in, call the NFL channel. But we're simulcast on anything on, on both channels. So you can catch that. Uh, Tara Roberts will be the guest tonight. You know her from many places. Uh, so And Jamie will be joining us. So lots of good stuff. And also catch me on the pregame shows on Sunday from 11 to 1 with Jeff Mance. How about some questions? You want some answers to questions? I bet you do. All right, let's go in. Steve Linder, uh, okay, all is well. Thank you. Needs two flex spots out of these. Nico Collins, Russell Gage, Zay Jones, Jahan Dotson, Ramondre Stevenson, and Kenneth Gainwell. I'm tempted to say Zay Jones right off the bat. I mean, you know, the targets have been there. He seems like a bit of an upside play. And I'm going to say Jahan Dotson. Now, I don't know that those two touchdowns are going to be the norm, right? Uh, because they were, But they were schemed for him. Those plays were specifically schemed for him. He was the primary target on both those touchdowns. So I think that's interesting. Curtis Samuel is going to be there to kind of be a fly in the ointment for McLaurin and Dotson. Antonio Gibson's playing well. I don't have a lot of faith in Ramondre Stevenson yet. I'm hoping for more, right? I'm, you know, I hope at some point. Pittsburgh's defense is pretty tough. Kenneth Gainwell, I think, is a viable play. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Jones and Dotson right now. Um, you know, if you feel a little more comfortable with the running backs, I wouldn't talk you out of one of them. Uh, let's say for Jones. Dominic Conte, good morning, sir. I have Rams home versus Atlanta. And now a defense question. But I switched to Cincinnati against the Dallas, uh, Cincinnati at Dallas. So you want the Cincinnati defense going against Cooper Rush? I don't think that's a bad play at all. Also, though, I don't think the Rams versus Atlanta are a bad play. I'd probably stick to Dan Pat. Michael Carter or Brandon Cooks, one point PPR. Cleveland defense has been pretty tough against running backs, but both those guys in that backfield got pretty good target shares. Um, Cooks, I think, has a fairly tough matchup this week against Denver. But, man, he is like the only real offensive weapon you can count on for Houston. I'm probably still leaning Cooks. I'm going to talk you out of Carter. You know he's the heartbeat of this offense, right, says Mike LaFleur, the offensive coordinator. Interesting how they see him. Uh, Brees Hall got a lot of targets. I, I'll have an article up later today at footballdiehards.com on the usage of those guys, so you might want to check that out a little later in the day, Dominic, and just get get a better – or I'm sorry, Jesse, uh, to get a little better feel for exactly what that usage is. Uh, I don't want to run through it and bore everyone right now, but, but I, I'm probably leaning uh, Cooks at the moment. Brian Baker, hey, C.D. Lamb or London, different per PPR league, Higgins or Kirk. Cheers to you, sir. Oh, man. So Drake London, uh, you know, can he, uh, can he do, can he Stephon Diggs, Jalen Ramsey? I'm using that as a verb, Stephon Diggs, because Diggs just crushed Ramsey. After being crushed by Ramsey pretty much throughout the course of his uh, time uh, in previous meetings, but uh, really got the better of Ramsey. It was kind of a, not a pretty, pretty sight. So I'm probably... You know, I don't want to outsmart myself here, right? Because Cooper Rush, his last start, the last game he started, had a really good game, right? He threw for 300 yards against Minnesota. CeeDee Lamb, I think, and Amari Cooper both had 100 yards. Dalton Schultz, Schultz was heavily targeted. 
I think the bigger concern for me in Dallas right now is the offensive line. <clears throat> it wasn't going great with Dak, right? I mean, the offensive line had issues. Tyler Smith, the rookie who's filling in for Tyron Smith, was like the strong point of the line, it seemed like. And that was a surprise. That He was the big question going into that game. So, oh, man, I feel like almost like I'm outsmarting myself going Drake London here. If I go Drake London here, I'm just going to double check and see how close it is. Yeah, it's pretty damn close. I'm going to go London. I think that's crazy. I th you know, I think we're outsmarting ourselves, uh, Brian. I'm going to probably, I'm going to stick with Lamb, give him a shot. I don't want to give up on my, give up on the, the draft capital I invested just yet. Look, I know we always say, you know, start your studs early. I don't think you know who your studs are. And we don't know that CD Lamb's a stud, but he's been called out on the carpet, right? Uh, Jerry Jones has put him on notice. He had a good game in the last start for uh, Cooper Rush. Uh, Cincinnati's defense is fairly tough. I'm going to go ahead and go with that because I don't think Atlanta's offense is all that great. Higgins or Kirk, I'm probably going to go ahead. You know, if Higgins is playing, I'm going to play him. Um, but Kirk is a great play as well. I'm going to play Higgins. All right. CT, QAP, a couple of questions. Who do you like better as a stash? Uh, Watson or Tony? Uh, C. Watson, C. Watson. Um... I can trade Aaron Jones for Michael Pittman in a keeper league. Good, I, good deal. Hate his quad issue. In a keeper league, you know, I, I wouldn't be averse to have a Michael Pittman. I think I would like to have Michael Pittman. I don't think that's an unfair trade um, in a keeper league. If it was a dynasty league, for sure. In a keeper, it kind of maybe depends on how many you can keep every season. Hate this. Hate his quad issue this week, but it's just a short week. Um, trying to see which Watson we're talking about here. Uh, it's not coming to me. Let me see what I got. Uh, Green Bay. Oh, Christian. There we go. I'm gonna have to get used to the rookies, I guess. Um, I probably like Christian Watson as a better stash. I don't know what Tony's future is. He's, you know, been unable to play in like 19 of the games he's been in on so far. I so there was a number last night and, and in two of the five games he's played and he's got hurt during the game. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be working. I'd probably go Christian Watson on this one. Um, Remy, Bob, can you help me pick from two? C.D. Lamb, Melvin Gordon, T. Higgins, Allen Robinson. Uh, I'm probably still sticking with Lamb in this one. I'm not against Melvin Gordon. I thought the you know the workload was pretty evenly split. It sounds like uh, they want Javante Williams to continue to be more of the receiving asset in this, which is kind of a little you know, turnaround from what we expected, right? We thought Melvin Gordon was going to be more of the receiving option, but it does sound like there's reporting out there. I'll have an article up on it later today on footballdiehards.com, by the way, that uh, Williams is going to be the preferred receiving option out of the backfield. Uh, this is from Nick Cosmiter of The Athletic uh, talked about it this week. Um, so uh, it's Lamb for me. I mean, I, I think Allen Robbins is in line for a rebound game, but I'd like to see it before I have to play it, especially with great options like this. I know CeeDee Lamb needs to rebound too. Um, I think he's more likely to. Melvin Gordon probably has a safer floor. And I'm not against T. Higgins. Coming off the concussion, maybe give him a week. I think he's going to play, though. He did practice fully yesterday. He's listed as questionable. The Trigger Finger Studios is trying to get kicked out. Uh, defensive streamer. Eagles or Dolphins? Eagles play Vikings. Dolphins play Ravens. The Dolphins destroyed the Ravens last year. You, you know, the all-out blitzing. I think they blitzed 24 plays. It was, it was crazy. Uh, Lamar Jackson says he's got a handle on that. I'll have an article up on that overnight at footballdiehards.com. You'll be surprised to learn. A lot of articles going up on footballdiehards.com. Um, so, you know, have they figured it out? I don't know. It was not a good game for them last time. I'd kind of be tempted to go Miami in this one and see if I could catch that. Because, I like, you know, I did, general rule of thumb when I'm looking at defense is I'm doing two things. Who has the disruptive playmakers and who's going against the easiest quarterback? I don't think either of these are easy quarterbacks to go against. But I do think the uh, – the Dolphins had a pretty good plan last year, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go with that one and hope it holds true. Uh, Steve Linder, the other PPR question: one wide receiver spot, Lamb, Bateman, or Ayuk? As for one running back spot, Stevenson or Gainwell? Probably playing Stevenson over Gainwell. Uh, again, it's a tough matchup, but I mean, without Ty Montgomery, there's a there's a possibility Stevenson gets the uh, you know kind of the receiving back role there, plus some carries. Very explosive threat. Like I, I like Gainwell, but I thought Sanders looked good enough that. Maybe he's going to be more of a limiting factor than I thought. I had high hopes for Gainwell coming into the season. 
Um, not, you know, again, I think he scored a touchdown last week, so it's not like he's incapable, right? Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and go with Stevenson there. And on the wide receivers, don't like Bateman playing Xavier Howard, according to Vontae Parker last week. That's very hard. I do like Ayuk in this game, but I'm still sticking with Lamb. Hi, Rick. Great to see you as well. Thanks for coming by. By the way, email email at his email. No response yet. Ari Football Day Hearts hiring. Okay, I'll make sure he looks for that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jesse Cedillo, ETN Burkhead or Stevenson, Bateman or Samuels. I'm probably playing the ETN out of that group. I'm probably, you know, like, so the Bateman versus Samuels, right? So Samuels was fantastic last week because he had two touchdowns. The usage was fantastic as well. I'm going to go ahead and play that role because I hate the matchup for Bateman. But I think you're taking a little bit of a chance there, right? We're expecting Curtis Samuel to be that two touchdown score every week. He's not going to be that, or the touchdown score. He's going to be he's going to be though an interesting play, and maybe he's more of a, an impediment to JD McKissick, especially if Antonio Gibson keeps playing well. Remember, he came from Carolina, where the coaching staff came from. He came there because the coaching staff knew him and had plans for him. Plans haven't been able to come to fruition because he hasn't been healthy or wasn't healthy last year. He is healthy now, and we can see what the plan is. And I like the plan. I like Bateman, too. I just hate this matchup. So I'm going to go take a chance on Samuels, but it is a chance. Scott Kobe, David Montgomery, or Travis Etienne, and what do you make of the Jaguars' backfield? I make the Jaguars' backfield, and again, I'm going to have an article up on that later today at footballdiehards.com. Um, it's, you know, it was a pretty even split last time, right? And if, you know, James Robinson hadn't had the two touchdowns and... Travis Etienne made a couple of plays that he didn't make. We'd be having a different conversation about this backfield. I think Etienne is just fine, and I would go ahead and play him over Montgomery until I see what the hell's going on there, right? I mean, you know, look, I'm not going to pretend it's great because Montgomery was not great. Eric laid it out. A yard and a half of carry was horrible. Uh, it's, you know, and, and I want to see. You know, I want to see. I, I expect Montgomery to, to fare better in this game, but, but if I have Etienne, I think I feel a little more comfortable with that. And I do think, you know, we're going to see going forward – a fairly even split. I know I've talked about this before, but Mike DiRocco from ESPN wrote about this going into the season, and I think he is correct. And I think it's this is how it's going to play out is, uh, you know, by the time the season's over, James Robinson will have had more carries and Travis Etienne will have had more touches. So would like to see him have a great game too. And especially in PPR, Scott, I think you're fine. Allen, Chase Edmonds or Jamal Williams. If Swift doesn't play, I'd probably go Williams in that one. It's a tough matchup for Chase Edmonds. I think in a PPR league, as you just, I see the second comment. Uh, Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds is a fine play, but if there is no Swift, I'd play Williams for sure. Good afternoon, Robert. Rick helping out Scott. Going with Montgomery. All in on that. Hi, Pedro. Picked up Mostert and dropped Sky Moore. Thoughts? Look, Sky Moore is falling behind Justin Watson. He's like the wide receiver five for the Chiefs right now. And I mean, I don't think that is a permanent condition, but is the current condition. And Justin Watson has done nothing but make plays since he showed up in Kansas City. You hear it universally from all the beat writers there. They can't say enough good things about this guy. And we saw the big play. I do think what Patrick Mahomes said about this offense is true, though. Every, different, every week, there's going to be a flavor of the week at wide receiver there. I think Juju is a solid floor guy, but, you know, or has a floor. But I don't even think we're going to see that. You know, I don't think we're going to get, like, great feeling from this uh, passing attack every week other than Travis Kelsey. Uh, so there you go, Pedro. And, and I, again, Sky Moore still, you know, he's going to be playing with Patrick Mahomes for many years. So, you know, don't hit the panic button on him. But, you know, especially in Dynasty. In, in, in season long, though, yeah, move on. I mean, if you want. And if you have room, hang on. But if you don't have room, I'm fine cutting bait. Cesar. That's Czar. Czar. I don't know. I'm saying that wrong. Uh, oh, I missed Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Another question. Last question for you at a point for completion league. Should I go Brady or Wentz, the quarterback this week? Um, I've been going with Wentz over Brady uh, in many of the answers of the <laughs> many answers. We still have Brady ranked ahead of Wentz on the on the staff rankings of football diehards. You can go check them out at football diehards. I refer to them a lot. I don't adhere strictly to them. We do this based off an algorithm. We adjust them throughout the week. I have a lot of faith in the algorithm because it's been righter than me over the course of time. That said, I play my hunches, and my hunch is Wentz here. Uh, just based on the history of Tom Brady against the Saints, also based on a you know lengthy list of injuries for the Buccaneers. I think most of those guys are going to play. Fournette, Evans, uh, Julio Jones, Gage, Perriman. I think they're probably likely. They seem more... 
uh, on the on the the uh, the positive end than not. But you'll have to watch that heading into the kickoffs tomorrow. Um, but but man, I'm going to take another chance with Wentz, especially uh, given the matchup against Detroit this week. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that, and I, and I think you'll come out okay, even if somehow Brady comes up with his first great game against the Buccaneers or against the Saints since he's been a Buccaneer. All right, so our bench one, DJ Moore, Michael Thomas, Jerry Judy, Chase Edmonds. I'm probably benching Edmonds in this game. Just I don't like the matchup. I do like the usage as a receiver. Didn't like the rushing attack last week. Wasn't impressive. Uh, and I think it'll come around at some point. I don't think this is the week it comes around. I like all three of those receivers. I think DJ Moore gets a bump a little bit this week, uh, even though he's got a kind of a, you know, like he's going to be competing with Christian McCaffrey, but I think they need to get, I think the the coaching staff there has talked about it. There's an article about this up at footballdiehards.com from Friday morning. Uh, but they're determined to get both those guys more touches. So hopefully more has a bigger role. I love Michael Thomas. Don't love his matchup. Carlton Davis is tough, but I'm still playing him. And Jerry Judy showed what he can do. Uh, this could be more of a Cortland Sutton week. And even so, both of those guys could play fairly well against the Houston Texans. Max, start Amon Ra, St. Brown, or Michael Thomas. I'll go ahead and start Amon Ra this week. Uh, for the reason I just said, Carlton Davis Jr. Like, it's, it's been like kind of a, you know, these games have not been fantastic for on either side, these Bucks, saints games. Well, there's been some good for the Saints, but for the most part, it's been pretty tough playing. Andrea, need one, Cole Komet, Higby, or Alberto in a PPR. I want to throw out the Cole, I want to throw out that Bears game from last week. Like, I talk about this all the time. I'm kind of, I mean, totally injury agnostic, and I'm mostly weather agnostic. But there are times when the weather is horrible, and I'm not pretending weather is ideal and bad weather is ideal. <clears throat> what I'm saying is football's been played in the winter and in inclement weather for my entire life and well before that, right? And offense happens in inclement weather. We even saw offense happen in last week's game. It just wasn't ideal, right? And it's never ideal. So you're looking at other options. So I want to throw that one out a little bit with all that said. And, and I do expect Cole Komet to be the second leading receiver on this offense. Uh, <clears throat> I do. I mean, Higby was heavily targeted last week. Didn't do a lot with it. I do like Albert O in this game, given the matchup. It's pretty tough, Andrea. I'm going to the rankings as I'm sorting through these. You guys are on to my tricks, right? I sit here and talk about uh, all the uh, various pieces of this as I work out in my mind what the hell I do. Uh, I'm probably going to go Albert O, a slight lean to Albert O in this one, and hope that some of the run that Beck and Tomlinson got last week go all Albert O's way this time. A.J. Dillon or Bateman, thank you for an easy question. All these questions are hard. I know that's why you're asking them. And so I'm trying to give you, you know, my opinions. Once again, if you didn't know, I'm Bob Harris. I don't even think I introduced myself. You all know that if you're here probably. But, and if you don't, I'm Bob Harris. Hi, glad to meet you. Um, but, you know, what I do here is not try to tell you what to do because these are your teams, right? But I tell you what I do. I kind of talk you through the issues, even if I'm not entirely sure what I do. I try to give you a pretty firm answer. Uh, but, like, if you have a hunch, play your hunch, right? Like some, sometimes the questions lead me to believe you're leaning a certain way. I'm not trying to talk you out of that way unless it's totally asinine. And it almost never is because this is a pretty smart group that shows up here on the whole, right? I mean, you guys are here because you uh, are keen fantasy players and you've probably been playing a while. And if not, let me know. I mean, I'll jump in, you know, and I'll be more forthright. You know, I'm, 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 I put my opinion out there, but just what I want to say is, I'm here to help you be the expert, right? You know, everyone says, oh, you're a fantasy expert. No, I'm a fantasy professional. I'm here to make you an expert. So I bounce my thoughts off you. You should take them for what they're worth, my thoughts. And uh, I'm not there with you on Monday when you're kicking yourself in the ass uh, after things go south uh, in a certain situation. So do the thing you want to do, uh, even if I'm telling you to do another thing. But in this case, A.J. Dillon over Bateman, for sure, for me. Jesse. I love it. So I'm, I'll just explain a little bit behind that. Again, you've heard me mention Xavier Howard a couple of times. If you look at last week's game against the Patriots, I don't know if Devontae Parker is going to be a great player. I know he wasn't a great player against Xavier Howard because almost nobody's a great player against Xavier Howard. Rashad Bateman, probably not going to be a great player against Xavier Howard. I just don't see it. I think this is a Mark Andrews game. AJ Dillon, on the other hand, against the Bears, they gave up, what, 176 yards rushing last week to a team that didn't have its best running back. I don't know. I'm going with Dylan. I think he'll get the, if he gets that same 15 plus touches this week, he'll have a great game. Andrea needs one quarterback, Brady Rogers Wentz. Um, I probably play them in almost in that opposite order. Like I like Wentz an awful lot this week. I like him more than our rankings. So this is a little bit hunchy for me. I'm not expecting another four touchdown game, but I think it's entirely possible against Detroit. Right. Um, 
you know, this the smart money is not to bet against Tom Brady, but I'm going to bet against Tom Brady. Our, our rankings have them in the order you list them, right? Just so you know. Brady, Rodgers, Wentz. I'm tempted to play Wentz in a six-point touchdown lead. I think Rodgers is going to play better because that's his history, bouncing back. I believe I have an article up about that at footballdiehards.com if you want to go read it. A little more detailed view of this. Uh, yes, there are articles at footballdiehards.com. You'll be surprised to learn. And some of them will uh, full, more fully inform you. If you want to check that out, go to footballdiehards.com. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. 15% uh, discount if you use the promo code diehards. Also, subscribe to this channel or hit the like button here if you don't mind. Uh, helps us feed the algorithm. Or if you dislike me, you can hit that one as well. It's right down there. It's really good. Appreciate you. All right. Hey there. I have Najee and I just traded him for Camara. Did I screw up? I don't know if you screwed up. I don't know if I would have done it, but look, it wasn't good for Harris week one. Like we shouldn't make hard and fast decisions. Here's, here's a, here's some helpful, broad knowledge. You know, don't make decisions based on week one. And I don't think you did because Camara wasn't great week one. Also Camara's hurt this week. I don't know if he'll play. Uh, Najee is off the injury report. He will play, but it wasn't great last week. Right. And the offensive line is a problem. And this defense this week is a tough call. Uh, the defense for the Saints uh, is going up against is a rough call. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers pretty good against running backs as well. And Kamara, I, if if you made me, you know, if you slapped me in the face at three this morning and said, is Kamara going to play and put a flashlight in my face? I said, what? No, because I don't think he's going to play. Dylan Edmonds or Elliott? Uh, I'm probably going to go in the order of Dylan, Elliott, and Edmonds. That order. Like, I'm not totally against Zeke, but that offensive line worries me. The new quarterback, a little bit of concern. Again, Cooper Rush played great against Minnesota last year. I don't want to overstate the case, but the offensive line, again, is the bigger concern for me there. Scott Kobe asks a very valid question. What do I listen to, Fantasy Sports Radio Tonight or the DFS show? It's a very tough decision. Well, I would do both because I multitask. I keep one earphone in one ear, one earbud in one ear, one in the other, and have both things playing at the same time. But you can watch a replay of the DFS show anytime on YouTube after my show, or if you have the SXM app, you can listen to a replay of my show. So you can pick your poison. That's a good question. Scott Hedge, half-point PPR, need to. Lamb, Higgins, Brown uh, from Arizona, and uh, Cook. Cook as in Who? Help me out with that. Uh, Mr. Scampers is here. Hi, Scampers. Great to see you. Um, I mean, uh, is it Cooks? Brandon Cooks? Uh, just guessing based on the range of receivers you're talking about here, which is a pretty good group of receivers. Uh, definitely playing Brown in this game. If it's Brandon Cooks, probably laying off a little bit. I do like him, but I don't like the matchup that much. Marquise Brown, Cooks, probably the smartest plays. If it's if it's Cooks, I'm going Cooks. And uh, if it's not Cooks, let me know. Dame Overlord. HPPPR need two. Waddle, St. Brown, Allen Robinson, and Hollywood. Hollywood for sure. Amon Ross, St. Brown for sure. Look, I'm not against uh, Waddle. I thought it was interesting. I'll have an article about this at Football Diehards later today. The depth of target. This year for Waddle has increased noticeably, uh, which leads to more fantasy points. You'll be surprised to learn. So they tell me. But those are my two. Like, I think Allen Robinson is going to be fine over the course of time. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for, forward to seeing that. And I think Waddle's fine as well. I'm just playing the, the guys, the two that I think are higher end options this week. Uh, St. Brown is uh, is definitely, definitely ahead of, yeah. Yep. The rankings even agree with me on that one. Horrifying. When me and the rankings totally agree. Andrea needs one running back and one flex. Pollard, Ramondre Stevenson, James Robinson, Elijah Moore, Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard is a Sunday night game. He's listed as questionable. I think he's going to play, but I'll kind of rule him out based on the fact that I need a fallback. And there's two Monday night games, people, so you might have more fallback options. So uh, keep that in mind if you want to play Alan Lazard. I'd like to play him. Um, but I don't think I don't know for sure he's going to play. I think he's going to play. So I'm going to go ahead and go James Robinson here as one of them. Pollard or Stevenson? Ooh. My gut says Stevenson. What did the rankings say? The rankings agree with me once again. 
Damn, I hate it when that happens. Yep, Pollard, uh, Stevenson, and Robinson for me. Scott Kobe, I need one of the following in PPR. Demonte Smith, Mooney, DuVernay, or Zay Jones. Uh, I'd take the one that's uh, Darnell Mooney uh, for me. I mean, I, I again, I'm expecting a little bit of a rebound game uh, for for this just this offense in general. And by rebound game, I mean I just think of a game without a foot of water on the field. I think that was a limiting factor. It was, you know, I'm sure that had something to do with how much Justin Fields was running. I'm hoping he's throwing a little more. Pedro, I had to say good one, Godwin. I need three out of these four thoughts. I think Dorch is going to have a real good game. So do we, so does Jamie Calander or Eric Romoff. I like I call my cats the wrong name sometimes too. It's so offensive. Uh, Eric Romoff thinks the same. Uh, Devontae Smith, Robbie Anderson, Jahan Dawson, Greg Dorch. Boy, Pedro, that's tough. So, I mean, Devontae Smith did absolutely nothing this week. I think he'll be doing more going forward. So I don't want to throw that out. I think Robbie Robbie Anderson, I think the role, this could be a rebound season for him as well. I love Dotson. Maybe irrationally love Dotson. I like, the, the thing I like about Dotson, so like all these guys are right in the same range. Or it's, it's a tough call. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go in this order. Smith. Uh, Dotson, and, and I mean, they're right with each other. But if you want to play Dorch, I would definitely throw him in the mix, you, you know, because I think he's got a good matchup. The slot corner, you know, the slot, well, maybe not the best matchup. Slot corner for the Raiders is, you know, probably their their strength on that defense. The outside guy's a little weaker. Um, but I probably still want to play him as well. So I'm probably going uh, Dotson, Smith, and Dorch. All right. You want to do a bit, 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 bit. Cooks or Judy, standard bonus. This is Corey Bishop. Cooks or Judy, standard bonus at 100 yards. Uh, I'd probably take the Judy side of this equation in this one. I like Cooks just fine. I think they're going to be playing from behind every week. I think the matchup's a little tougher. Again, this, is a, this one's close enough that I wouldn't talk you out of Cooks. I'm a huge Cooks stan. I cannot hardly not play him. <laughs> right, I, I just think he's a he's a great play almost every damn week. So uh, take that into account. Let me see how far off I am from the rankings on that. What the rankings say? Hmm. You have to be able to work the computer to actually work the computer. It's a funny thing. Yeah, the rankings really like Cooks a lot more. This is this is more my hunch. Cooks is the smarter play, but if you have a hunch about Judy, feel free. Iron Eddie, and and by that I mean the the rankings like him a lot more, and uh, the rankings are not as worried about the matchup as I am. The rankings are probably smarter about that. You know what we do with our worries? Uh, we have our concerns. We blow them up, right? It goes back to you know prehistoric times when we thought there might be a saber tooth tiger outside the cage. We weren't sure outside the cave. We weren't sure, uh, but we played it safe. It might have just been a mouse. But there's a noise out there. Where, ooh, might be the worst thing. Tend to do that with matchups, I think, as fantasy managers. So Cooks is probably the smarter play. Iron Eddie, half point PPR, needs two out of Ramondre Stevens, uh, ETN, Damian Pierce, Elijah Moore, Jahan Dawson, Jacoby Myers. I'm going to probably go with the first two there. Look, I think Pierce, you know, good chance to talk about Pierce. You know, if you listened last week or if you are listening to football diehards on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio all week or on NFL Radio on Saturday night, you knew I was a little down on Pierce. Um, not that I'm down on Pierce. I expected him to get more of the workload, right? I was as surprised as you were that Rex Burkhead <clears throat> got the bulk of the workload. I think it's due to his fantastic haircut. I'm not sure. Um, but I don't know that that's going to change materially this week. But just in general, if you looked at last year's numbers, those guys, the Texans as a team, ran for 3.4 yards of carry. I think they came up short of that this year. They did not improve their offensive line. This is one of the reasons Brandon Cooks is so good, right? They're playing from behind. And this game, though, they were playing from ahead. And they still didn't use Pierce a lot. So I need to see a little bit from Pierce before I buy into it. Elijah Moore, I think he's going to be fine over the course of the year. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to take my chance on Stevenson a little bit as the receiving back and ETN for sure. ETN is a sure choice out of this group. I already talked about Dotson, but if you missed it, uh, the thing that encourages me about Dotson is that those two touchdown passes, or the touchdown passes he caught last week, the two, they were schemed specifically for him. He was the primary target, and they worked to perfection. Uh, so if, uh, pick a third, if I pick the third, it would probably be Dodson. 
Elijah Moore might be the smarter play, though. All uh, right, that's a little bit hunchy on me, just based on what we saw, how we saw the offense playing out last week. Scott Kobe, RB2 in a PPR, Melvin Gordon or Cordero Patterson. I'm probably going to take a chance on Patterson. It's a tough matchup. I get it. Um, but he is a clear running back one. And there's no Damian Williams again this week. Maybe we'll see Tyler Algier. Don't know. Uh, but we will see Cordero Patterson. There's another case where we took something that we weren't sure about, right? If you looked at the ADP for Patterson all summer, it was way low, right? You're getting him. I drafted a ton of them as my running back four. <clears throat> I didn't expect him to duplicate last year, but I think the concern was we heard early this offseason that he was going to be working at receiver maybe a little more this year, and maybe the plan was not so much wear and tear at running back. And then we saw nothing all summer, and we viewed that nothing all summer as, as a negative when really it was probably a positive, and they were just keeping him safe and and in bubble wrap. So he did wear down late last year, but when he was on a roll, he was on a roll and he is healthy right now. Uh, Rick PPR Lockett at San Francisco Shepard versus Carolina or Zay Jones uh, versus Indianapolis or McKenzie uh, versus Tennessee. I think we're digging a little deep if we're going McKenzie. I think they're going to be good weeks. He might score a touchdown. I think there's a lot of mouths to feed there. I'm so this might be uh surprise. I like, I like Sterling Shepard in this offense. Uh, for the Giants, and so does Emil Cadillac. He's the wide receiver one there, clear cut. So I'm probably going to go with that. I don't like Lockett's matchup that much. I'm not keen on him. Um, it's between him and Jones for me. I might irrationally like Zay. Zay. I, I like my, might like Zay Jones way more than I should. Yeah, I'm going to play probably, I just want to check the projections here. So uh, I'm going to play Lockett. I wouldn't talk you out of Zay Jones, though. So Lockett and Shepard, I think you list them as your first two, probably for a reason. Gordon or Hunt for me, probably playing Kareem Hunt, uh, just because it's the Jets and they lay down for running backs. Article going up about that later today at footballdiehards.com. Bear down. Go Arizona. Hope they can do better this week. Need two flex plays in PPR. Najee Harris, Marquis Brown, Jerry Judy, and Higgins. I'm probably going to go with Harris and Brown. Um, if you're worried about Harris, if you thought last week was maybe something we're going to see more of, and it is a tough matchup again this week, uh, Patriots play pretty good run defense still. Um, if, the, you know, if Najee doesn't work for you, I would go Judy over Higgins. Christian Watson Green. Yeah. Okay, I figured it out. Thank you. Takes me time. I'm old. Roblox, D. Johnson, DJ Moore, or M. Brown? Deontay Johnson, DJ Moore, or M. Brown? Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and play. I'm going to play. It's between Deontay Johnson and Marquise Brown. I'm going to check the rankings, see what the rankings say about Deontay Johnson. Uh, he looked great last week. 30% target share. Matchup probably favors Marquise Brown, so I'll go that way. Schultz or Ertz? I like Ertz an awful lot this week. He is healthy or healthy enough to come off the injury report. Uh, Schultz was heavily targeted by one Cooper Rush in that last start. I mentioned Minnesota. Boy, this is too close. My Ertz loyalty is hard to get past. I'm probably going to play Ertz in this one, um, but there is no wrong answer here, Jesse. Evans or Dylan or Zeke in a one-point PPR. I'm probably playing Dylan here. I'm all in on Dylan if you people can't tell. I'm not against Zeke. You know, I just don't have high hopes. And Edmonds, I'd like to see a little more of the rushing portion of this. This is a PPR, so I think you'd be fine playing him as a floor play, but I wouldn't play him ahead of either of those other two. Would I play Pittman this week? If he is cleared to play, I would play him. Frank Reich said yesterday that he was very optimistic about it. It was a quad issue. The weird part was, you know, he went from limited practice Wednesday to no practice Thursday. Then usually you get some clarity on Friday. Is he practicing at all? Is he limited again? Is it not good? They didn't practice yesterday in an unusual move. I think all the beat writers called it odd, or at least two of them called it odd, because it was odd. They just said they had two really physical practices and they wanted to take a day off. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll hear something. Watch the website, footballdiehards.com, uh, to see if anything arises or we get any news throughout the day. I will have something heading into tomorrow's, you know, into the game day. If you're familiar with the site, I do a bunch of overnights, gather up all the information from the Adam Schefters, the Rapports of the world as they put out their information. So you'll find that all in one spot. 
and I'll know more. My feeling is if he plays, he'll be fine to play. Dynasty trade, Davis for Goddard. Need tight end help. Ah, uh, Davis. I'm going to have to clarify. Apologies for that. I'm not sure what Davis we're talking about. Doesn't doesn't hit me right away. Sometimes when I'm reading names and I'm trying to go as fast as I can, it's hard for me to pick out like a generic name. So sorry for that. Who to start it? And as soon as you say who it is, I'll go, oh, of course. But just can't, can't, doesn't hit me. Who to start at the running back and flex position? Jeff Wilson Jr., David Montgomery, Rashad Penny, Chase Claypool. So far, I have Monty and Jeff Wilson in those slots. I would definitely do Jeff Wilson Jr. I would probably, you know, it's between Montgomery and Penny for me. Kenneth Walker's coming back this week. I thought Penny played great. Didn't, didn't really appreciate the usage. Uh, it's a little tough, fairly tough San Francisco defense this week. So I'm not against David Montgomery in this one. You're taking a little bit of a chance, but I think you would be with Penny too. See how it plays out. I'm with you. I stand pat. Mr. Scampers would like to know. Christian Watson, Garrett Wilson, or Mark Ingram. And if Pittman sits, who is the second? Thanks. Well, that's an interesting question. I will get into that. I'm probably would take my chance with Watson in this one. I mean, like if he had caught that touchdown last week, we'd be having a whole different conversation about him right now. We'd all be enthusiastic and excited. I want, you know, so let's just say it's an early kickoff for the Saints Buccaneers tomorrow. So you'll know if there's no Alvin Kamara. We'll also know if there's a Latavius Murray. So I think if Murray's activated, I'd be a little worried about Ingram. Ingram also questionable with an ankle injury, Scamper. So uh, how disrespectful, Mr. Scampers. I like talking like we're best friends. I mean, I think we're friends, but not best friends, maybe. Mr. Scampers, Mark Ingram. Uh, so uh, I'd watch that situation. I'm, you know, if if I don't feel like Ingram's in a prime condi- prime position, and again, just keeping all this in mind that they're going against the Buccaneers who play really good run defense. Um, I'd probably be leaning Watson over Wilson. And the second tight end, the second wide receiver, I think it's going to be Paris Campbell, right? So there's no Alec Pierce. He's been ruled out. And uh, and that leaves guys like Ashton Doolin, Michael Strawn, who like I like is a big physical guy, but we just haven't seen much from him. So I think it's Paris Campbell is the guy that would be the next man up for me. You know, and either of those other two could make a play. But Campbell's, you know, always been an intriguing guy. And maybe with a little more opportunity, he'd be even more intriguing. Dave Bednarek, PPR needs two of these running backs, Aaron Jones, C. Patterson, Hunt, or Connor. I'm playing Connor every damn week. I can't stay. I can't quit him. Assuming this is James Connor. Uh, yeah, I'm playing Connor. And um, need two of these. Jones. Jones and Jones and Connor for me. Uh, not against Patterson. I think I think this is a week that. Aaron Jones, I think they're going to course correct a little bit on the workload there. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that and you think the split is going to happen, go ahead and play uh, Fournette, or not Fournette, um, Patterson is next man up. So in that order. And Hunt would be down the list. Again, I like the matchup against the Jets. like the two touchdowns last week. Touchdowns are a little volatile. Dame Overlord, half point PPR, Cooks or Patterson? Playing Patterson in that one. Uh, trigger favorite defense, love the question. Dave Bednarek, oops, forgot to add PPR. I... Uh, yeah, that, I, I think it, either way, that's good on that. And I, I mean, it works more in Jones' favor as well. So it just kind of solidifies my view. Connor, Jones, Connor, Patterson in that order. Are you trying to get away from Brady this week? And if so, how far down are your rankings? Are you going? I am doing that. I'm going pretty far down my rankings. I'm going down to Wentz level for sure. I've like already gone out on that ledge a few times. Like I'm playing Kirk Cousins over him. I don't know if I'm playing Trey Lance. I don't play if I'm playing Jameis Winston or Tua Tonga Valoa. And, you know, I, I think right to the, you know, down to the, I'm certainly playing Carr, who I've ranked right ahead of him. The guys that we have ranked after him based on the algorithm, Matthew Stafford, be playing him. Aaron Rodgers, closer decisions. Cousins for sure, Wentz for sure. I think after that, I'm playing Brady still. It's like I'm not allergic to him. I just am mindful of what's going on with the, the history of this, these matchups and the injury issues for him. So don't want to overthink it. Uh, but don't want to miss out on an opportunity. Frankie Probst, half point PPR, James Robinson, Pierce, DJ Moore, CD Lamb, London, or Stevenson. That's a pretty long list. Um, half point PPR, Mike Go Robinson, DJ Moore would be next man on my list. Uh, right with CD Lamb. I mean, again, I don't want to say that I'm like totally down on CD Lamb, but I'm pretty down on CD Lamb. I think the algorithm doesn't like him as well. He's at 22. 
overall. So more well ahead of him. I probably, I think in that order of those guys, I think it's for me, Robinson, Moore, Lamb, and then the rest. Hometown heroes, Kyle Pitts versus Rams or Taysom Hill versus Tampa Bay. One point PPR. Thanks again for the help. And thanks for the advice. So I like Taysom Hill. I think he's an interesting play as a tight end because he's going to get those runs and snaps. I think it was all came on like four plays last week. He's going to have some time in the, in the red zone as well. I think I don't want to overthink this one. I think I'm going to continue to play Pitts. Um, for me, I'm going to play Pitts. I mean, it, you know, it's easy to be down on him after a bad game. And I know that goes back to last year. We've only got the one game to hang our hats on with Taysom Hill's role. I'm not against Taysom Hill. I just don't know if we can expect that, you know, that good fortune with the limited workload he got. And the thing that's more appealing about him is when he gets in maybe under center and some red, you know, goal line packages and stuff, that's going to be favorable to him as well. I just think that's pretty hard to predict. I'm sticking with Pitts. What about Mostert? I'm thinking of using him a little ad, as a little add-on to a trade, but is he good to stash? I think he's fine to stash, but for right now, you know, I want to see more from that rushing attack before I get too excited. I'm heavily invested in Mostert, so I'm not against him. I like him an awful lot. And I think at some point the rushing attack will get it figured out. But this offense right now is running through Tyreek Hill. And it's a tough matchup this week. So, Robert, 12 teams, half point PPR, small thing. New England defense or Indianapolis team defense? New England against Pittsburgh. Indianapolis against Jaguars. We beat, beat them down. I'm probably going to take my chances with New England here. The thing about Indianapolis, we have no Shaquille uh, Leonard and... Uh, Buckner, I believe, is questionable. So the force Buckner is questionable. So a little bit of an issue there. Mark Spafford, any worries that Fournette plays a reduced role with a tweaked hamstring or Rashad White looking good last week? Slight worry. I mean, look, I think Fournette remains the tip of the spear of, for this backfield. I, I mean, he's going to be the one. White is going to get his turns just like any running back, too, is going to get his turns. I know there was some talk about this last week. I talked to the guy who started all the talk, Greg Almond, he tweeted out, you know, about that 80%. I think maybe what five guys this week had 80% snap shares at running back. It's not the norm, right? It's it's unusual. They're the outliers. So if Fournette's getting less than that 80% number, 70%, 60%, something Rashad White's going to get some run, but Fournette's going to be the primary piece there. This week, though, the dynamics a little different because he does have the hamstring. So it'd be a little bit of a concern. Need help in the second league. One flex out of Melvin Gordon, CD Lamb, Gabriel Davis, Daryl Henderson. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm probably playing Daryl Henderson out of this group. Right now, I'm treating him as he is the de facto starter and lead back for the Rams until further notice. Could we be totally surprised? Would we be totally surprised if Cam Akers comes out and after, you know, uh, gets sent a message, uh, runs with more urgency or whatever? Not 100% surprised, but surprised, right? Surprised, for sure. I think it's Daryl Henderson right now. And I'd go with that. And uh, probably Lamb next, then Gordon. Nate Davis. I think Davis is fine, right? I mean, it's a good offense. There are a lot of people in that offense. They're going to all have good weeks, and sometimes not all of them will have good weeks at the same time. So, yeah, Scott Kobe said, you can hit the like button, hit the dislike button. I'm going to hit the dislike button. No, I'm not. I kind of like myself um, a little bit. Do you think Devin DuVernay might be the best receiving option this week for the Baltimore's against Miami? I think Mark Andrews is the best receiving option. I think after that, maybe it is DuVernay because, again, Xavier Howard. Um, you know, I know kind of mixed opinions. There are people who think Devin DuVernay is a very good player. I think he's a very good player as well. Uh, I have invested in him in dynasty. Uh, I have some best ball shares of him cause he was very cheap. Um, I don't expect last week, very many weeks. So I think what we're going to find is every week, you know, there it's going to be as a general rule, Andrews Bateman and another guy. And some weeks that's going to be Devin DuVernay. Maybe, he should, you know, I hope he proves me wrong. I'd like him to do better. Yes, after Andrew. I see your comments, Scott. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, could well be this week. I mean, it would not surprise me. Would I be shocked if it was Isaiah Likely makes good on his promise? Man, some week that's going to happen. It won't be James Prochet this week. Maybe Demarcus Robinson. Prochet is doubtful, so I said that. All right, PPR flex spot from Dave Gladstone. One of these three uh, have feel the highest upside. Hines, Burkhead. Or Lazard. Lazard, if he plays, but it's a night kickoff. I think he has the highest upside. I think he's a great, you know, clearly has Aaron Rodgers' trust. You saw it last year with the end zone targets. I think he was, I think he was like in the top 15 in the league in end zone targets last year. So, so if he was playing, and if I knew for sure he was playing, but it's a night kickoff and I don't. So, 
Uh, second most faith in probably Naheem Hines. Like, I think Burkhead still has the lead role or, uh, you know, I don't know that this the, this is the week at the, the, the switch flips between Burkhead and Pierce. I mean, maybe, maybe not. So the mystery there, I feel a little more confident that Hines is going to have a role. I don't know that it's a high upside role though. So, but definitely Burkhead is not a high upside role because he's in a Houston backfield. So the, the answer to your question is Lazard. The question then becomes, does he play? Thank you, Andrew L. I appreciate that kind comment. We do put uh, the the the, in, the website. We do pack tons of info. If you haven't been there recently, we've got tons of articles up right now. Tons of tools, all the things you need to dominate your leagues, including my fantasy GM, which, which will help you manage all your rosters across various platforms. Something I need help with every week. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. Uh, Jerry Jeffrey Cooperman point. PPR, three wide receiver league. I was offered DJ Moore and Montgomery for my Nick Chubb. Jefferson Cooks, Mooney is my three starting wide receivers. Running backs, Chubb, CEH, Sanders, Akers, Jeff Wilson. Did the trade. I don't know that I'm doing that trade. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I think, you know, just my general thought is I can usually cobble together wide receiver depth off the waiver wire if I really need to. And maybe some guys will rise up. We'll maybe see players that we didn't expect to rise up. And that'll happen to running back, too. I like Nick Chubb. Uh, you know, uh, maybe more than most people, I think, this week. I definitely want to play him this week. So I'm not doing the trade this week. Uh, so I think about it more, more likely next week. And maybe the trade won't be available, but maybe it'll be different because David Montgomery has a better game because you're buying low on Montgomery and more right now. Maybe they both have great games. Um, probably not doing that one right now. Uh, hello, Ian. Uh, J.K. Dobbins or Devin Singletary? Uh, so it's going to be an early kickoff for the Ravens. If if I know Dobbins is active, and you'll know that, if you uh, need to keep track of that, go to the Football Diehards website. We keep track of those things for you. And uh, you'll know that in the 90 minutes leading up to kickoff. I would go with Dobbins if he's playing. It's not the greatest matchup. Nor does, uh, you know, Devin Singletary, a lot of mouths to feed, kind of a convoluted backfield. I'd probably take my chance with Dobbins in this case. CD, Marquise Brown, or Penny start three. CD, Sutton, Marquise Brown, or Penny. Uh, I'll probably start Sutton and Marquise Brown, and uh, probably still CD over Penny. I might regret this. I'm a little worried about Kenneth Walker. I usually don't worry about these people. What I'm more worried about is the I – I expected better usage. I thought Rashad Penny played fine, right, against Denver. Five yards of carry. Just needed more carries, man. Worried about that. Purple Ninja, this is a standard league. So – I don't think that changes a lot for me in this case. So I'm probably going with the wide receivers in general. If you want to throw CD out for Penny, I think that is uh, perfectly reasonable. Pick two, uh, Najee, Dylan, ETN, and PPR. I'll pick uh, Najee and Dylan. Uh, let me see how close I am on. Uh, no, the algorithm does not like Harris that much this week. Yeah, that's it. Dylan and Najee. Pedro, a little square, scared by his wide receivers, but my reaction after reading the list frightened me even more. <laughs> Devontae Smith, Robbie Anderson, Jahan Watson, Greg Dorch. I mean, I, you know, those guys are all kind of in the same range for me, right? I mean, you're kind of taking your chances with any of them because they're not the primary weapons. I mean, Jahan Dotson seemed like, you know, the guy that had the best schemed role. Uh, but I think Devontae Smith, that was kind of an outlier game. And I think maybe Robbie Anderson's huge game was kind of an outlier game. I don't think Dorsey's game was an outlier game. I think we should have expectations for that. So don't get scared. It'll get sorted out. Uh, a Tavern. Hi, Bob. Non-PPR. I need two out of Robinson, Penny, Akers, Carter. That's a long list, man. You guys need to narrow this down a little bit for me in the future. I mean, uh, I'm probably playing not Akers. Walker, Kenneth Walker, Brandon Cooks, Curtis Samuel. <clears throat> wow. Man, what a speed bump. Uh, narrow it down for me, man. I Honestly, that's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got to do better than that, man. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm trying to get through all the questions. I can see Robbie Anderson as a wide receiver three. I can see that as well. I mean, you know, the possibility of a rebound season is definitely within the realm of possibility, right? I mean, two years ago, he was a very good receiver. Last year, he was not. They've invested a lot of money in him. So, <clears throat> yes, I think that's entirely possible. Bob Stanzay Jones, don't shy away. 
I'm not, I'm not against that. Zeke or James Robinson? Uh, probably playing Elliott over Robinson this week, uh, but it's fairly close. I still expect Zeke to get the bulk of the workload. Maybe he does better than we hope. I'm worried about the offensive line. I'm going to play Fryermuth over Kittle. Uh, number one, I think that he's showed to be a legit weapon. Number two, Kittle is a little bit of concern with the injury and maybe he st- stays in blocking. Pedro, I am in this wide receiver position because I picked picks in the third over a wide receiver. The effect of picking picks in the third is starting to unveil itself. It's early, Pedro. I don't know that it's unveiling itself. I mean, it's an issue right now for sure. Next man up in Indy could be Kyle Granson. Entirely possible, but probably not. Maybe. I mean, they do have, you know, they... <clears throat> Gabe Davis for Goddard. Gabe Davis. There we go. Um, thank you. Uh, if you need tight end help, yeah, that's a fair deal. Oh, wow. So we just got word, apparently, the while I'm chatting, that Michael Pittman is out. That's bad news. That's not what I wanted to hear. Why is my... Oh, there it just came in. Thank you, Mr. Scampers. My notifications just hit. That is bad news. So Michael Pittman out for this week's game. So now we are more interested in the Gransons and Parises and Doolins and Strawns of the world. Crazy. That's horrible. Receiver spot. Mooney, Claypool, Amari Cooper, one point PPR. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Mooney on that one. Probably like him in the order Mooney, Cooper, and Claypool, but uh, Mooney's clear cut. Uh, so Camaro or Henderson Jr. Henderson Jr. Right now, even if you know, even if Camaro plays, I think I'd go in that direction. Half point PPR. I see there's going to be a lot more questions, but I'm going to have to go write an update on Michael Pittman soon, so I'll try and run through these really quick, and we're past the hour, so let me get to these as quick as I can. So, yeah, so, I mean, like, if there is no Camara, I'd probably probably play Ingram if there is no Camara, and probably Wilson if there is. T. Higgins or DJ Moore, I'm playing DJ Moore. Uh, Logan Thomas, Knox, or Albert O, I think I'm playing Albert O on that one. Um, But, man, Logan Thomas' usage has been fantastic. Uh, whenever he's healthy. Yeah, I'm going to play Albert Owen that one. Uh, with Pittman out, Ayuk, Dotson, or Bateman, probably playing Ayuk there in a PPR. PPR, Hines, Fryermuth, or Duvernay. Pittman threw out, threw me a curveball, throws me one too. I'm probably playing Fryermuth to that group. I thought the, you know, the target total is good and then the matchup maybe works in his favor. Okay, Brees Hall over Romeo Dubs. With Pittman out, should I start Hollywood or Lazard? You start Hollywood either way. You don't know if Lazard's going to play. Thank you, Scampers. I appreciate that. Thank you, Andrea. Would you pivot off Matt Ryan for D. Jones, T. Law, or Goff? Um, yeah, probably Lawrence first of that group, then Goff, then Jones. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, so... Uh, I think that is a fair assessment, the Jonathan Taylor game. It was going to be a Jonathan Taylor game anyway, but that is bad news. All right, everybody. I got to go write an update for footballdiehards.com. It's a website. You should go there, check everything out. Tons of articles, tools, plenty of content, including like late-breaking news and things like that if people get hurt or ruled out all of a sudden. Uh, so we know what the hell is going on. Hit me on the uh, radio as well, Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. You can catch me there 10 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday, you'll catch me here on the YouTube channel, 7 p.m. Eastern time, every Wednesday night. Catch me here every Saturday at noon. Check out the DFS show tonight, 9 p.m. Check me out on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio and NFL Radio, both channels, 8 p.m. to 11 tonight. There's a lot going on, people. Let's get after it. Have a good week, too. We'll talk to you in the aftermath.